call this meeting of the Personnel and Animal Welfare Committee to order. Myself and Mr. Smith present. Um, and we will begin with uh, public comment with Mr. Spindler on, I believe, all items on the agenda and uh, plus general public comment. So you'll have two minutes on all items on the agenda plus an additional minute um, for general public comment. Yeah. Okay, this, not the special, just this. No. All right. So let's see here. Number one, for all the Harbor Peace Officer unit on the Moo 38, I say no. Sorry, no money for no more pigs. I don't care what you call yourselves, you're all pigs. Number two, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power report of the FBI raid involving five new job classes in connection with the Apex. You don't want to pass that. Even Greg Smith says no, because he don't want to be indicted. He only got another nine days to go, and he's free. Number three. Oh, for the record, the gangster current price is now present on Quam. So now we get to number three. They got another moo for the coalition of units covering more moos. All the cows here to graze and feed up of the city's taxpayers. Yes, sir. We say no, pending the FBI probe. Then number five, we're appointing a cunt to the mayor's office for one principal cunt project cunt coordinator position for the cunt administrative official for the cunt civil service, I say no. And then we get to the communication from the mayor. He ain't communicating to you. He ain't even answering the FBI's emails anymore. He taking the fifth. Number seven again. It's a lie. The mayor's not communicating to anybody, a financial manager, yes. See, the problem is he wants to hire Price Cooper's Waterhouse as the financial manager. But they said, no, we'll sue you and we'll take you to court and get the billion dollars after you're indicted. Number eight, another mayor re-examination of a general manager of the airport you let the power get turned off at the airport? Off with your ass. No. And then the personnel's about targeted local hiring. Well, now we're going to have to turn the remainder of my time over to the Honorable City Attorney, Mike Fear. Give him a hand. Yes, sir. Here he is. Um, yes, well, I, really, I understand that. Um, I fucked up, and I know in closed session yesterday, the council uh, wants to hire their own firm. They don't want me as your attorney anymore because they know that I fucked up and that Mr. Spindler uncovered the probe, and I should have settled with them in February 2017. I'm going to prison, and I'm a faggot, and I'm a piece of shit. My name is Mike Fear, for the record. Your time is Thank up. You. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Thank you, Mr. Fear. Thank you. No other speakers, uh, so we'll close uh, public comment. Um, and I'd like to ask that we approve items 11 and 12, as well as items 1, 3, and 4 on consent, if there's no objection. I had a question on 3. So. Okay, so we'll hold that one. Let's, good. let's approve items 1 and 4, and 11 and 12 without objection. Item two. Item two, Los Angeles Department of Water Power Report relative to establishing the salaries for five new job classes in connection with the Apex Generating Station. Hello, Dietra Fernandez, Welcome. Director of Labor Relations, Department of Water and Power. Good afternoon, Michael D'Andrea, Department, uh, Department of Water and Power, Director of Human Resources. Hello, uh, Chris Lynn, Power, D Director of uh, Power Supply Operations. 
Hi. We're seeking approval of five classifications that is at our apex generating systems that is outside of Nevada. The classifications are consistent with our steam plant series uh, that are doing equivalent um, work, and we'll answer any questions that you may have. So how will uh, the staff gain civil, civil service status? How exactly does this work? We, uh, we are creating five uh, new classifications for the Apex power plant, and they are essentially consistent with five existing classifications in power production in our, in, in our utility at present. Uh, we, the, the employees will be, will be hired and in, appointed into the new classifications. They'll do a traditional standard six-month probationary period after which they will be transitioned uh, through a 1014 process to the existing classifications after which the new classifications will be abolished. And what are the feeder classifications that these employees will be uh, transitioning into? Uh, so the classifications, once the 1014 process occurs, then they'll go to our traditional steam plant um, classification series. So either to the steam plant assistant, steam plant operator, instrument mechanic, plant mechanic, and steam plant operating supervisor. Right, and maintenance mechanic as well. So any interesting ramifications for this for future applications that are similar? Once this is established, these classifications actually will go away. Um, they'll be abolished, so we won't be utilizing these anymore. Um, there are some other classifications that we did not um, go forward with. Right, and sir, these, these were created as, uh, specifically for the transition of APEX staff to our existing classifications. So there would, and they were specific to the APEX plant in Nevada, so they would not be utilized for any, any issues beyond this particular process. Any other questions, anybody? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, I've, I've missed a few years in between. Was, it the, was this the plant that we used to share with some of the Nevada power authorities and broke apart once upon a time? Um, no, th this plant was purchased, uh, well, the contract was signed in 2014. Um, it was, it, the, the reason for the purchase at the time was, you know, as we, continue to divest off of coal. Mm -hmm. This was the meg the equivalent megawatts that um, uh, Navajo Generating Station served. Oh, okay. And then we utilized most of the path and transmission system to get that capacity sure. yeah. okay. in, yes. I, I remember the Navajo, I just wasn't sure this was the same thing and the authorities were different. I know there was a divestiture of all those properties. So the, are, is this the only 22 employees there then are working for Apex? That's correct. So we're, we're giving them an opportunity then to get into our system. To transition to civil service, yes, correct. Got it, thank you. Mr. Price, you have a, no question, okay. All right, so I'll ask that we approve this item without objection. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item number three. Item three, CEO report relative to the 2018-21 successor Miranda of Understanding for the Coalition City Unions covering MOUs Two, four, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, thirty-four, thirty-six, sixty-three, and sixty-four. It's not like a bingo game. <laughs> <laughs> Paula Days, CAO, Employee Relations Division. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So the one question I had was, um, I remember a discussion in this year's budget, the 2018-19 General Fund budget, that there were some issues that weren't resolved yet in the MOUs that we knew were coming. Did we, and I, it's just a refresher, did we set aside some monies toward that or we left that totally blank and this is totally not funded then in the general fund budget? I'll have to defer to our budget group who's here. Is there anyone here? No. Okay, I'm sorry. Dana Brown, CAO's office, employee relations. Can you ask a question one more time? So when we had the discussion of the 18, uh, 19 and 20 budget, there was a mention that there were some MOUs that were not resolved yet and we knew there would be a budget impact. Did we reserve any monies in the budget for the potential impacts, or is this totally going to be absorbed now in the UB or whatever? Yes. Okay. So uh, in the 1920 budget planning process, we did uh, assume the uh, 
obligatory costs associated with this with these agreements yes so we, we refer normally we wouldn't do that before council adoption but we were far enough into the process we did have a tentative agreement and we thought it would be fiscally responsible to do so yeah. but is it in the UB then we have to make that transfer yet then so that's a, a little bit technical so I would have to defer so, to one of the well the discussion the was we knew it was coming so we put the money somewhere yes sir okay that's what absolutely okay thank you I don't know if every dollar was a perfect yeah, match not be exactly, but I, I think yeah. close enough not to close cause us any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Any, other, any other questions, comments? If not, uh, we will approve the CEO's recommendations without objection. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number five. Item 5, communication from the mayor relative to the exemption of one principal project coordinator, class code 9134, for the CAO from the Civil Service pursuant to Charter Section 1001B. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Desiree Quintero from the mayor's office. Jackie Wagner from the CAO. So this is um, a re-exemption request for one principal project coordinator for the Office of the City Administrative Officer. Are there any questions? Yeah, was the previously approved senior project coordinator replaced by the pr a principal project coordinator? Thank you so much for that question, Jackie Wagner, CAO. Um, we are actually attempting to upgrade the individual that's sitting in that position right now. We hired him um, as a senior project coordinator, um, but the position has always been funded and authorized at a principal project coordinator level, uh, and so we are looking to right size um, you know, that appointment. So he is doing extremely complex work in closing out um, the CRA uh, appropriations. We have responsibility for about $90 million in former um, excess bond proceeds from the CRA. And um, it's a pretty complicated timeline and aggressive timeline that we have to meet uh, by January of next year. Um, and in order to um, allocate the full amount of the money. We have an additional other five years and are totally um, engrossed in doing a lot of MOUs, encumbrance documents, contracts, and proving to the CRA that we have um, you know, correctly administered and uh, allocated all of the funds. So yes, um, the position was, um, he was appointed as a senior, but he should be a principal project coordinator. And this action will correct that. And obviously, in the middle of this, you wouldn't be looking for somebody else uh, no, from a civil service not. pool. Absolutely not, sir. We we want to keep him. That's what this is. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? If not, I would recommend that we approve the mayor's recommendation without objection. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number six. Item six: Communication from the mayor relative to the exemption of one senior project coordinator, class code one five three eight for the Emergency Management Department for the Civil Service pursuant to Charter Section 1001B. Anybody here from EMD? Good afternoon, Your Honor. So the mayor's report states that EMD had multiple senior project coordinator positions that no longer have grant funding and no longer qualify for the charter section uh, 1001D4 exemption. So uh, will EMD return with more charter section 1001B exemption requests for senior project coordinators? No. State we, your name, please. Uh, my um, my name is Ellen Linock from the Emergency Management Department. Um, we will not be seeking more uh, Charter Section 1001B for a senior project coordinator. So this is the one request then? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what source of funds will be used to pay for this position? General funds okay. for now. And in the future, if 
grant funds are once again made available? Will there be any issues relating to uh, uh, supplanting those funds with? We will be the, using um, UASI funds once it's, it becomes available again. Most likely in fiscal year 2021-22. Okay. Any other questions? If not, uh, I'll recommend that we approve the mayor's recommendations without objection. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number seven. Item seven, communication from the mayor relative to the re-exemption of one financial manager, class code 1557, for the Office of Finance for the Civil Service pursuant to Charter Section 1001B. Good afternoon. Elba Palais, okay. Personnel Department Liaison to the Office of Finance. Christine Herrera, Director of Treasury Services, Office of Finance. And, okay. and Desiree Quintero, Mayor's Office. The Office of Finance is seeking the re-exemption of one financial manager for the Treasury Services Division. So you're not recruiting for somebody new. You're, you're, are you just uh, re-exempting a position that's currently occupied? Yes, it was vacated in March, and we're seeking the re-exemption of that position. And it's been, okay, so it's been vacant for five months. How's the work been getting done in that time? Um, we've been taking care of it, but actually... Um, we are looking um, the next couple of months to handle a bank transition that's going to require uh, some very um, exact experience from someone that is uh, well-versed in Treasury, cash management, banking, regs, just um, something that unfortunately is outside and we will have to bring in to the city. So we've been doing well for the last couple of months, but... Again, it's been a little tough. Um, going forward, we will need somebody with very strong treasury experience. So such a person presumably is not available through the typical civil service process. No, it's very, uh, people grow up understanding banking a little bit within the city, but really the expertise is in the financial industry. And it seems like the range of qualifications varies somewhat. Uh, is there a reason for that? Well, um, again, you, uh, banking, there's uh, financial, uh, there's, there's a lot of regulations that pertain to treasury, to cash management, and that is something that the city obviously utilizes, but you gain that when you're working with, whether they're corporations or other municipalities, that's kind of how I, I got my expertise is consulting, understanding how banking, again, very complex corporate types of applications apply to a cash management operation, whether it's a corporate or a municipality, which is very unique. It's a little bit different than even your corporate. And it does only come from experience uh, if you're on the banking side. Any other questions, comments? If not, I'd recommend that we uh, approve the mayor's recommendations, again, without objection. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number eight. Item eight, communication from the mayor relative to the re-exemption of one general manager, Airports One, deputy general manager that should be, uh, for the Department of Airports with civil service pursuant to Charter Section 1001B. Michael Leonard, Los Angeles World Airports, Government Affairs Division. Uh, Tim Ely, Los Angeles World Airports, Director of Human Resources. And I'm here to request the exemption a re-exemption of one deputy general manager, one position for the airport. And did the incumbent actually wind up vacating uh, as of July 29th? Yes, uh, the incumbent uh, was offered a position as the uh, director of Long Beach Airport, and the position is now vacant. We do have an interim uh, internal person uh, filling the duties at this time. And when do you think uh, you would be able to fill this position by? We would hope within the next 60 days or so to advertise it, not, not just internally, but externally, and try to find the best uh, qualified candidate for the position. And Lau has rec requested a number of exemptions in recent months uh, for managerial positions relating to various capital projects. 
Uh, do you have any pending civil service exemption requests currently? Uh, we just recently submitted two additional exemption requests uh, for our airport police chief, who was just promoted to the deputy level position of uh, public safety director for LAWA. And also, we have one that's uh, in the pipeline with personnel department for the assistant airport police chief. And that individual vac vacated the job uh, the end of last uh, end of July. And the Where did he go? Uh, she go? Um, she retired, and I think it's going to be a professor. Do you recall? Yeah. Or I, I'm sorry, professor. Yeah, professor for a university, but I don't recall where she left for Ethel McGuire was the assistant chief in that position. And are those positions that could be hired through civil service? Yes, so the uh, qualifications will be at the um, uh, level of a current airport police captain could qualify after one year experience, or we're looking for commanding officers outside uh, the department that have relative experience in, you know, uh, to run an airport or a police organization as well as specialties in intelligence, homeland security, anti-terrorism. So can you look to fill those first through civil service? Um, do you mean internally or yes. for external? We'll have to look at what the candidate pool is internally. It, you know, um, off, offhand, um, that's the, you know, we're, we'll look at both internal and external candidates. Uh, but we we really would like to see that if there's somebody internally that is capable for both of those positions that they do get the well-deserved promotion that they would need that for the position. Very good. Any other questions, comments? If not, uh, uh, we'll approve that item um, and approve the mayor's recommendation without objection. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine. Item nine, Department of Recreation and Parks report relative to the exemption of one electrician supervisor, class code 3865 for the civil service pursuant to charter section 1001D. Good afternoon. I'm Harold Fujita on behalf of the Department of Recreation and Parks. Okay, and what's the duration of the grants that are funding this position? Uh, we uh, will receive funding uh, for a very limited period of uh, three years. So uh, that is uh, part of why we feel it would be appropriate to exempt this position from civil service. Is the funding already secured? Yes. Um, is there any likelihood that uh, similar funding won't be secured in the future? Uh, it's unpredictable. I'm, I really uh, couldn't uh, decisively answer that question. I mean, is it possible? Yes, it is. Um, but uh, there's no way of knowing for sure. I mean, these types of grants uh, turn on the economy and so forth. And so there's so many factors uh, that it really makes it uh, very difficult to answer that question with any reliability. Okay, and that's part of the need for the exemption. Correct. Because of that unpredictability. Yes, okay. Other questions, colleagues? No, so if not, uh, we will approve this except exemption without objection. Thank you. Thank you. Item 10. Item 10, Personnel Department report relative to report back regarding implementation benchmarks and hiring goals mm -hmm. for the targeted local hiring and strategic workforce development task force. Good afternoon, Council Member. My name is Cynthia Fletis here representing the Personnel Department. As instructed by Council, the Personnel Department continues to report on the number of TLH hires. Um, in the seven classifications that are currently part of the program as compared to the hires in the same classifications through the traditional civil service process. During the current reporting period from April 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2019, a total of 75 hires were made through the targeted local hire program as compared to 55 hires made through the traditional civil service process, um, which brings us to a 58% um, higher rate through the targeted local hire program. 
I'd just like to highlight that this is an increase from the last um, reporting period, which was uh, March through end of, um, or end of March. I noticed that uh, for this quarter, we've had trouble hiring TLH folks into the custodian classification. Any particular reason for that? We've been working closely with some of the user departments um, to figure out ways to increase the hiring through the targeted local hire program. Um, and we've partnered with a few departments to create a um, more uh, focused uh, announcement to the targeted local hire candidates whenever there are vacancies. So specifically, we've been working closely with GSD to try to um, help them increase their custodian numbers. So did we not have people that wanted the positions or? They Did we not have departments that knew how to, to advertise for it? I mean, we had nine hires and zero TLH hires in that category. Right. Um, there were a few instances in previous reporting um, periods where TLH hires came in um, and then resigned from the positions. And so that's why we're now working closely with the departments to create a more realistic job preview for the candidates so that they know what to expect when reporting in. So essentially, we, we were successful in bringing some folks into that category, and they didn't really like the job once they got it. So obviously, we, we need to uh, preview that in such a way that we only hire people that actually want, want the work. Correct, and it was a small number of them. Okay. Um, now animal services received uh, several animal care tech positions. Um, how many of those positions are left to fill? Through the targeted local hire program, they have made um, five hires in this current reporting period, um, but I would have to defer to the department to report on their total number of vacancies. Yeah, they've already ha obviously had some good success since all the all the techs were hired through TLH. I'm just wondering how many are, are left. Um, so maybe the, uh, that department just get back to my office with an answer to that question at, at their convenience. Um, how long will the 34 individuals in the maintenance labor classification stay in that classification before they're able to promote up? Individuals hired um, through the program will receive six months of on-the-job training followed by a six-month probationary period. Um, and then once they, so after a total of 12 months, they will uh, receive civil service appointments. Um, and at that point, they can compete for promotional examinations. Any other questions, colleagues, on this item? Well, this is <clears throat> this is a uh, this is a uh, an important report. We certainly would like for it to be better and more, but it looks like we are inching up, uh, Mr. Chairman, in, in ways that uh, uh, I think are significant. Um, this is a quarterly report we're receiving from you, so every quarter we can expect to get an update on this. Correct. These figures. Yeah, I would just uh, see that we're doing more to uh, encourage uh, neighbors and, and, and friends and otherwise to uh, beware of the program uh, and to and to uh, to sign up, take advantage of it. It's obviously it's two pronged. We've got to get the departments willing to create these slots, but also we want to make sure that they have enough folks in the pipeline that can take advantage of them. So anything we're doing, anything we can do to encourage, to get the word out, to inform. Uh, the uh, potential employees of this opportunity, I think we've got to do it. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And it's, it's kind of interesting that for the most part, uh, the employees have turned out to be incredibly successful. And every once in a while, there will be a category where uh, we, we don't have as much success and we just need to figure out uh, why that is. And... Uh, uh, I suspect if we if we do a better job of uh, now that we see the problem of of uh, making people more aware of what their actual work is, uh, we'll we'll solve those problems in the couple categories where where things haven't been perfect. But overall, it seems like we're continuing to pick up steam with this program and uh, hiring more folks. So uh, we've made some exciting progress, and 
thank you to the department for continuing to move all of this forward. Thank you. So we'll receive and file this report without objection and move on to item 13. Item 13, City Attorney Report and Ordinance relative to amending Los Angeles Municipal Code Section 53.09 to allow temporary home care for a lost or stray dog or cat. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to have to do my impersonation. <laughs> Dove never leaves the building. He's, he's part of the fixtures. I'm sorry. I don't know how to turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> Try stomping on it. It's <laughs> a <laughs> problem with a new phone. <laughs> All right. So if you could briefly uh, uh, walk us through this. So this was here uh, once. And identify yourself. Oh, thank, yes, thank you. Yeah, who the hell are you? Who are you? Uh, Dove LaSalle, Assistant City Attorney. Um, I'm also the attorney for the department. Uh, this matter came to the PAW committee uh, a while back, and the committee had some concerns, um, as did the department. The department wanted that, for instance, after the 30-day period, if, um, if anyone wanted to... Uh, adopt the dog that they were holding on to for that 30-day period that they should be able to do so and the department should be able to waive the adoption fees for the dog which makes a lot of sense uh, the other was that the committee was uh, concerned about potential liability we've added in language that um, would require the finder uh, within 24 hours to sign a an agreement that is akin to the foster agreement used by the department for these many years uh, that would uh, address some of those liability issues. Um, we think that uh, other than that, um, uh, the ordinance remains the same as was uh, originally sent. Uh, and essentially, this would allow someone who finds a lost uh, cat or a dog uh, to uh, do home care instead of bringing it into the shelter immediately. Uh, they would be able to take care of it at home. They would have to check it for microchip with, uh, and notify the department within four hours, which is in the law now and has been the law for at least 60 years, uh, so that a potential, the, the owner uh, would be able to contact the department and the department would have the information that the lost pet has been found and the department would act as the broker, if you will, between the person finding the animal and the owner of the animal uh, to, uh, to reunite the, the animal and its owner. And would the person that finds the animal ever have to bring it to the department? Or is this yeah. completely a distant transaction? Um, they would have a choice. Uh, if uh, they need to bring the, the uh, animal to a, a vet or to the department to have it scanned. What the department wants to make sure of is that if the animal has a microchip, that that will be scanned within the 24-hour period so the department would know and would be able to contact the owner of the animal. And so since most people don't have those wands, uh, if they have access to a wand because there's a community group in the area, a nonprofit, that will use the wand, uh, if not, they could bring it into their vet, and if not, they could bring it into the department. The department will, uh, will check for... Um, uh, both medically and check for any microchip. Uh, and so, uh, once again, to be able to reunite the animal. In those cases where it's clear that we don't know who owns the animal, the department will have the information, and the lost pet, instead of remaining at the shelter for that period of time, uh, will be in a secure, a secure home environment. And... Uh would whichever vet looks at it also have to check to make sure they're spayed or neutered, I presume? or No. Uh, that would happen after the 30 days. The, uh, the finder would have to bring the animal into the uh, department, and before they can adopt it, pursuant to the law, the animal would be spayed or neutered. Or at least they check to confirm that Absolutely. the animal was spayed yes. or neutered already. Yes. Uh, is there any kind of cap on the number of found animals uh, one individual could rescue? I, I think that we could leave that to uh, the discretion of the department because it's not so much rescue, it's really a question of finding. If you have one person who's beginning to find 
a lot of animals, I suspect that the department would have questions. Right, I think so too. Yeah, and, and the, the same pet limits would apply, three dogs mm -hmm. and three cats at this time, unless they're under four months old. Okay. Other questions, comments? Remember, I just have one thing I want to pass on to the general manager. Um, this was given me recently by a neighbor of mine, just coincidentally walking by my house. And, and so it's Operation Blankets of Love. Mm, Are you familiar with them? Work with them. Yes. Okay, they said they've, they've made entree uh, to the department, but nothing much has happened. So this sounded like something that would go well with this program. Right. And I would hope you'd contact them and see how you can fit them into this, maybe. If there's no other comments, questions, uh, I recommend we approve the draft ordinance without objection. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. So I'd like to adjourn this meeting and uh, go into the special meeting. Mr. Spindler, you have one minute on the item and one minute on general public comment. Oh, good. Okay. I'll turn my two minutes over to our city attorney. Go ahead, sir, Mr. Fear. Thank you. Stick to the uh, item, please. Well, yes. Thank you so much. Well, we're going to talk about today. Um, my vetting of the MOUs 3, 6, 7, 10, 11, 16, 37. And, well, my office uh, has been a little busy with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, so I haven't been able to really go over these MOUs as carefully as I had I'll, hoped I'll only warn you one more time. No, I... Uh, well, 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 it's one... It's one uh, uh, who, who are you? Oh, Mr. Smith, yeah, I thought you died. Okay, you're still back on the council. All right, so we're talking about MOUs 3, 6, 7, 10, 11. Um, again, to quote the great Armando Herman, FOC number 3, 6, 7, 10, 11, 16, and 37. Now you have one minute under general public comment. Um, yes, yeah, so, um, you know, as you can see here, um, uh, I, I committed a, a, a big personnel boo-boo. Apparently, um, on topic. I'm, yes, uh, personnel. Yes, see, I, I uh, negotiated uh, an MOU with my staff at the city attorney's office, and it seems apparently that I may have used city resources illegally through a ruse. Um, I've been giving false information to the State Bar of California for contact information for certain services I've been providing. And I was dumb enough to leave this shit in the garbage. And um, so somebody found it in the fucking garbage. And now, 11 days after an FBI probe, I'm going to have a new problem. <laughs> I just want to resign. I want to be like Greg Smith and retire. I'm so tired of this job. I'm a bad thank city you, attorney. Thank you, Mr. Oh, Spindler. Thank you, Mr. Fear. I, I should have settled your case time in 2017. I know. If, well, if he's not... Yeah, well, well, okay, I'm just talking to my boss. Okay. okay. All right. And we have one additional speaker on item number one, Tookie Williams. I am assuming that person does not exist, so. Uh, no, I think that person's sitting in the front row. <laughs> yeah, I, well, yes, uh, one, one of someone else's multiple personalities. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, I will move to item number one. Any questions or comments? from the committee. This will, just for clarification, cover um, MOUs 3, 6, 7, 10, 11, 16, and 37. Well, based on the sterling testimony that we received on this item, uh, I will recommend that we approve the CAO's uh, recommendations without objection. 
Uh, so those are passed. And uh, do we have any other business before us? Jessica's clear. Okay, so the special meeting is adjourned as well, and we are adjourned.